the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, finally submitting the shortlisted candidates for the country's next chief justice to the JSC. The list has also been shared with political uh, leaders represented in the National Assembly. It includes Constitutional Court Justice Mbui Seli Madlanga, President of the Supreme Court of Appeal, Judge Mandisa Maya, President of the Gauteng High Court, Justice Dunstan Mlambo, and Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. Let's unpack the story for you now. News 24 legal journalist Karen Morn joins us now uh, via our video link in Johannesburg. Karen, uh, good morning to you. Thanks so much for your time. So early on a Thursday morning, the first time in the country's history that the president has uh, submitted the names of, of four people instead of one. Absolutely, Michelle. I mean, the only um, comparable experience we have is when President Mandela um, asked for a great deal more consultation in, in his um, appointment of the Chief Justice. And at that stage, there were two nominations. But typically, since then, we have only ever seen one name being put forward by the president. And that candidate then, the candidate then interviewed by the Judicial Service Commission, which uh, typically has always endorsed the president's choice. So this is an exceptional uh, moment in South African history, and it will be fascinating to see how the Judicial Service Commission deals with it, uh, whether or not you know, they endorse all four of those candidates or they attempt to put forward the person they believe to be the best. There simply is no playbook for what we're going to see uh, when those interviews take place. So, so in effect, Karen, um, how do we read it? Uh, is it a good thing uh, or a bad thing? Is the president effectively leaving the decision in the hands of lawmakers in the JSC? Well, I mean, the, the most important thing to remember, Michelle, is that he has the final call. This, yeah. The power to appoint the chief justice, the power to appoint judges, lies very much in the hands of the president. But what's very interesting with the Constitutional Court, for example, is that when justices are nominated, a short list of, uh, you know, the number plus a number of options are put forward to the president and he has a discretion to choose. In the case of the Chief Justice, typically we've seen a scenario where he is chosen and then the JSC effectively, in many respects, rather stamps that decision. And that has been the case. So he's not handing, you know, I think what's going to be interesting is what does the Judicial Service Commission do in this particular scenario? All four of those candidates, I would contend, would be suitable, uh, you, know, re you know, replacements for, for Chief Justice Mokweng Mokweng. Mm. The question then is, does the JSE attempt to narrow it down and say, we believe these are the people for the, the best people for the job? Or do they simply endorse those decisions and leave it in Ramaphosa's hands to choose who he wants to. Um, and I think that is where the real, the real debate will lie. Right, right. And I suppose the next question is, given that the list of four candidates does include two constitutional court uh, judges, are they perhaps best placed to take the reins of Chief Justice? I think the real question is, what is the judiciary need at the moment? It's been described as rudderless and bleeding. There is a clear crisis within the constitutional court, both in terms of the divisions between justices, which may have somehow shifted since certain of those ju justices have now left the court. Uh, but administratively, it is struggling. It's overworked. It's overloaded. And it's, it's about putting in a person in that position who is going to be able to bring, deal with those divisions, but also take administrative control of that court. Mm. Because there are judgments now dating back for over a year, more than that, that have yet to be delivered on a court which typically is supposed to have a three-month deadline. So I think these interviews are going to be pivotal for the South African public you know, to be able to see who of those candidates brings that uh, kind of element of, of unity to that court, but is also able to take control of it and run it the way it needs to be run. Yeah. Given everything that you've just said, I mean, Chief Justice Mukweng Mukweng's term expired on the 11th of October, so it's been more than a month now uh, since we've had someone acting that, in that position, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo acting in the position of Chief Justice. You know, by all accounts, everything you've talked about insofar as the challenges that the court itself is facing administratively, how long is the process going to take, do you reckon, to finalize? I think they need to get it done as a matter of urgency. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to have a Chief Justice by the end of the year. One would certainly hope so, given the, the issues that I've outlined. Uh, you know, it's really a case of when now it's now, now in the hands of the Judicial Service Commission. They need to conduct those interviews. They need to make sure those interviews are conducted in an appropriate manner, given the unfortunate reality that the last time, previously, um, 
this before this latest round of interviews, they effectively had to you know, they were not an ability to defend the interviews that they conducted for the Constitutional Court mm. and had to reconduct them. We are now talking about the highest uh, level of, of the judiciary. We're talking about the person who is in control of our high courts, of our Supreme Court, of the Constitutional Court. This has to be conducted in a way that doesn't replicate the profound misogyny and problems of the last interviews, um, which resulted in justice Daya Pillay not returning to, to be interviewed again. So it's now in the hands of the JSC. They must determine a date, and one would certainly hope that they conduct these interviews in a way that is appropriate and not loaded with the political uh, point scoring that has previously defined their other interviews in the Constitutional Court. News 24 legal journalist Karen Morn, always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for giving us some clarity on the important issues at hand.